sekalian. Seterusnya kita akan teruskan lagi soal bengkel yang pertama iaitu pembentangan daripada Profesor Dr. Dr. Sarah Haridan yang bertajuk Magnetical Modeling of Physi Physiological Fluid Flows dengan segala orang yang dipersilakan.
continuity, the momentum and the energy equation. So the energy equation it only comes into play when we uh, consider uh, models with heat, with temperature change and so on. If there's no temperature change, we don't put the energy equation. And I told you also earlier about the fourth uh, equation that is the uh, mass equation when we consider mass transfer. Yeah? Okay? So, uh, well, actually, we are going to uh, see uh, how to derive each of these equations, but uh, that will take time, so I will skip some of them. Right. Um, so, for modeling, for example, so we have mathematical modeling. So, how do we start? It's from the real situation. Okay? Real physical situation. Like for example, this morning we have the blood flow in artery and so on. So from this, what we do next, we translate uh, to, we want to derive the, what we call the governing equations. Okay? So from this, we can have this, uh, we have to derive the governing equations and as I have said, all equations of fluid flows originate from uh, those three equations I mentioned just now. The uh, physical, uh, the three equations, and they come from three physical principles. So, what are the governing equations? They are the continuity, the momentum, and the uh, energy equation. Okay. Where does this continuity equation come from? from the uh, physical principle which says the conservation of mass and this one is from Newton's second law okay? and the energy from first law of thermodynamics. Okay? So some of the slides will show how to uh, derive this equation. After we derive the equations, then of course we want to find the solution. Okay? So the solution, how do we solve this equation? We can solve it analytically. Yeah? And uh, numerically. Uh, numerically, we have uh, that I showed you this morning is the FDM and the FDM. Finite difference method and finite element method. But of course, there are many more methods. For example, the boundary element method, the spectral method. Okay? But uh, at the moment, we are only concerned with this one. So this is, in general, simpler, uh, easier to do um, compared to the FEM, we we'll see later. But uh, this FEM is more uh, flexible and more useful if we want to solve difficult uh, flow in difficult uh, domains. For example, in just now the bifurcations, you know. So we need to use this one. This type uh, is more flexible and uh, you know they. they that this is better than this, but that's more difficult. Okay? Uh, the analytically, yes, you can solve any uh, many methods. So analytically, also we can have the exact, okay? Exact method and also the uh, approximate. Okay? So the approximate method some, uh, that we are used to for fluid flow is the perturbation method. Okay, the presentation method, the asymptotic, yeah, asymptotic, and the exact this one include all the standard um, solution of PDE, ODEs, and also the transforms, yeah, like uh, Dr. Rubika was telling this morning, all those Laplace, uh, Fourier, uh, Melling, and so on. Okay. Um, so this is about uh, the way 
uh, actually uh, the modeling is concerned. So if you understand this, means uh, uh, that's it. This is what we are doing in applied mathematics. Yeah. So so when we are when we are uh, presented with a problem like, like just now, like this morning when I told you, uh, when I showed to the doctor came to us, we asked the doctor, what is your problem, doctor? Now what's your problem? And he was telling about he is to the radiation. So he was here and now he come here. Okay? So what's the what are the equations? Yes? And from the equation, so I will show you the uh, most general form of the equation. Okay? This continuity equation from the conservation of mass, we have this equation. Del rho del T plus del dot rho U equals zero. So the slides that I'm going to show you after this will show how do you get this equation. So this is called continuity equation. So this is Dr. Winston said all the verbs or the uh, I usually say the worms are me are catching. <laughs> uh, that really looks like worms. <laughs> yeah, all the uh, I use British engineering students at UTM and they don't like all these integrals. Yeah? Um, and then we have this row is the density, this standard notation, row is the density, and of course del is del. Uh, the, what is it? I del del x plus K delta Y plus K delta Z. Okay? And this U is the velocity vector. So this form of equation, this form of equation that hasn't taken into account any coordinate system yet. Okay? This equation is valid for every fluid flow. You haven't considered the physical situation yet. So from this equation, if we say it's number one, it can be broken up into, uh, not broken up, can be branched up into uh, at least three other equations because we have the Cartesian, okay, the usual one, Cartesian coordinate, we have, we can have the cylindrical, coordinate and we can have the spherical coordinate but we have more we can have prolate, spheroidal whatever right so uh, usually for blood flow we go for the cylindrical coordinate because it's a flow in a tube okay that are cylindrical tube so we go for the cylindrical coordinate so that's why later you will see all the r and z and uh, usually we don't consider the theta, the, uh, the uh, change in theta because that the flow is rotating. Okay? So the X and Y is usually, usually used to describe channel flow. Yeah? Flow in Cartesian uh, coordinate in a box or just in a plane. Okay? So that's it. Right? So this is the continuity. And then what about the momentum? Okay, so the momentum equation is um, one of the most important. Uh, is um, uh, actually the most important equation because when we make some simplification, sometimes this uh, continuity equation is uh, automatically satisfied. So we are left with this uh, conservation equation. Okay. So for this um, momentum equation, the momentum equation, the general form is something like this, plus u dot del u is equal to del u i k del x k plus x i. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I am mixing both tensor and uh, vector notations. So this one should be, so this is called tensor notation, okay, tensor notation. So, uh, so in a fluid mechanics, we need to be, to, 
fight to be quite well versed, don't be scared of vectors. Okay, we use lots of vectors. So our calculus are calculus vectors, vector calculus. Okay, differentiation of vectors, integration of vectors, the Stokes theorem, divergence theorem. So when you teach your students, so it's uh, make sure they understand the real uh, story behind these equations. Not just, see what, what we uh, have when we teach students Stokes theorem, Green's theorem, the students can get A. You know, they, they know the steps. But then when we uh, go to, when they learn fluid mechanics, when they want to um, prove something, they just cannot do it using, you know, because in proofing whatever, there's no numbers, no, uh, you know, U, uh, U, uh, 3i plus 6j plus uh, uh, 7k, whatever you integrate, right? nothing. We, we have all these numbers, so they don't look quite like this, yeah? So, so this, uh, this is a better form of the momentum equation, the most general form. So I hope at least, uh, after you, after today, you should remember continuity and momentum equation. Okay, so the continuity is this, is like this. Uh, I write again L dot rho u equal zero. Okay, so this is uh, I forgot to say something just now about the continuity equation. This is the most general form of continuity equation. And this is uh, applicable for gas, for example. Okay? Because gas is what? Physically, gas is compressible. Okay? But when we talk about blood flow or water, you should consider it to be incompressible. When it is incompressible, this continuity equation becomes simpler and maybe you always see this one. Only del dot u equals zero. Okay? So this is the continuity equation for incompressible fluid. Uh, but this is the most general equation for all fluids. Yeah? Especially for gas. Yes? Okay. This is the momentum equation also for all fluids and for gas is also is simpler. It's the other way around. The momentum equation for gas is simpler because it doesn't have this, this part. It is called the stress tensor. Uh, gas has, uh, I cannot say has no friction, but friction doesn't come into account. So this one like that. This one we don't have this part. So for gas, the momentum equation is simpler than ordinary fluids, than other fluids, but the continuity equation is slightly more complicated. Okay. Now, how do we write this in terms of tensor? So in terms of tensor, when we have this vector u, so u means what? U vector u means uh, we can have u x, y, z, i plus v, x, y, z, j plus w, x, y, z of j. So this is what is meant by this vector u. So you can see when we write it like this, one line, but it actually means three components. Okay? So, so that's why we write it, we make it into short form. And usually we write like this, E U I. Yeah? So I equals 1, 2, 3. So U1, uh, this, this U, the X component, U2 describes the uh, Y component of velocity, and it describes the Z component. Okay? So, so actually this one, Fi already in vector form, so meaning Fi, this is the body force, the one that I said just now, low gravity magnetic force, that's called body forces, electromagnetic force and so on. This one is called surface forces, then this is 
body forms. Right? So this uh, body force forces act on to the uh, fluid. Okay? But this one comes from the fluid itself. Okay? The surface forces. Right? Uh, so this one uh, to be written in uh, tensor notation it is U I del del X I U J. Okay? When it's a dot, it's written like this. Okay? So you can see afterwards. Uh, in fact, I have shown also this morning uh, the vector form. Okay? So, and another thing that I want to say is the sigma ij. Okay? For the simplest way, sigma ij is written as this. For ij. Okay? So this is for Newtonian fluid. What are Newtonian fluids? Newton, an example of Newtonian fluids are water, air and so on. But when it comes to blood, actually, blood cannot, uh, cannot be suitably described by Newtonian fluid. Because blood contains uh, red blood cells, as I said just now. So these red blood cells, they are not small, right? They are quite... Uh, I mean, it can be seen with microscope and so on. So we have to take, to take note of their presence. And as I said, or mentioned also this morning, there's a group of people who work on what should be sigma ij for various fluids. Yeah? So, uh, so we have many forms. Right? So the simplest is Newtonian. And this is the, uh, the expression, the term, and P is pressure. So this is delta IJ. So what is delta IJ? Delta IJ, okay. This is a vector. If you have one index, the I or the J is called index. One index is called vector. So two index, but I, I don't have... Uh, present sentak terus tak. So to index kita panggil apa agaknya? Matrix lah. Uh, ah yeah? ya, two dimensional matrix, three by three matrix. Okay. Ah uh, jadi ah uh, so what do you think delta ij? Kalau dah biasa, the Kronecker delta delta ij dia kalau i equals j baru dia equals one. Otherwise it's zero. So dia ada j ni. Okay, sorry. One, uh, identity matrix. Yeah. So, you dah sampai kat tempat memang max lah. Dekat sini eh. So, you see that uh, in fluid mechanics, uh, you need to love max. Uh, <laughs> fluid mechanics is the, there's one definition. Fluid mechanics is the science, is a science that uses a lot of mathematics. Uh, that's the description of fluid mechanics. So, jadi uh, some people think of fluid mechanics in, in engineering. No, the engineering people, they use experiments. Yeah? So, uh, uh, fluid mechanics are usually, I mean, if we are mathematicians, we can understand the, all these better than uh, the engineers. We think like that, but the engineers, actually, if they work, if they go for PhDs, yeah, Further, not the design of PhDs, they are doing the same project as us, applied mathematician. It's the same. They don't do experiments anymore, they, also, they, they work like this also. So, if you can see uh, fluid mechanics papers, you can see the affiliation with their mecha me mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, you know. So, they, uh, we have to do, uh, uh, we have to know. So, mathematicians, should know a little bit about uh, on about engineering, physical things, and the engineers should know about mathematics. So that's why now I, I, I'm, I'm uh, how would I say, advertising also at UTM, we have this Master of Science in Engineering Mathematics. So we uh, welcome students from uh, mathematics to learn a little bit more of physics, yeah? Engineering 
and the engineering people, student, can take this program to learn about mathematics. So, I hope you understand this part. So, we can continue. So, now, how do we derive this continuity equation? Uh, actually, uh, a good book which we use for the, this derivation, a good reference is by Anderson. Yeah? Anderson uh, is called Computational Fluid Dynamics. Computational uh, Three okay. <coughs> so it describes quite well. So uh, this is one one um, approach to derive continuity equation. Actually, there are uh, in, in that book there are about four four approaches. Okay, we have the one of them is the finite control volume. Another one is the infinitesimal uh, small element. It's called. What do you mean by finite control volume? What do we mean by infinitesimal? Another one is this infinitesimal. Apa uh, maksud? What does this mean? Infinitely small element. And usually, if you see standard fluid mechanics book or engineering students. They use this uh, to derive the equation, this cube. Okay? Uh, so, but, but uh, we mathematicians and for uh, on higher level uh, derivation, which is more valid to most uh, cases, we use finite control volume. And this finite control volume can be fixed or it can be moving. Yeah? Uh, so that why we come up with four. So finite control volume, fixed and moving, they give rise to different forms of equations, different forms of continuity equation. Forms are huh? only bentuk, yeah, the forms are different but they are the same. Okay? And the infinitesimal model also has uh, uh, two, whether it's moving or it's fixed. Okay? So the fundamental physical principle is mass is conserved or the conservation of mass, okay? And which says that net mass flow up of control volume to surface S equals to the time rate of decrease of mass. So we can read this better. Okay, so what does this mean? This is this is words, these are words, yeah? So these words needs to be translated into mathematical terms. So, so we need to learn what is it net mass flow? Okay, this is this is what we say. Uh, elemental mass flow, okay, is uh, rho, no, this A, okay, so this, uh, net mass flow out of control volume, we say is A, time rate of decrease of, uh, inside the control volume, we denote it B, just B1, it's not area or whatever, it's just the left hand side and the right hand side. So the left hand side is rho V dot B S. Okay? Don't worry about the A equals. Yeah? So the elemental flow across the face is the integral over the surface of the density times the velocity dot B S. See? So we have the uh, fixed control volume just now. So over the surface, what is the uh, mass flow across the surface? It's the density times the velocity and taken over the surface. So this is the surface integral. Yeah, when you teach your student, this is one of the uh, uh, use of that. Okay. So what is time rate of decrease of mass? So it should be the time rate of decrease, right? See, time rate of decrease, decrease must have the minus, and time rate, the d, d, d. Okay, mass. So this is very easy, very uh, physics. Mass is density, just density integrated over the whole volume. Why? Because by definition, density is mass over volume. Okay, mass over volume 
times volume so we'll get the mass over the whole volume so we have this rho v dot v s equals minus d t t integral rho v v okay so this one is nothing just we arrange but uh, before uh, so this can be the equation already but maybe this is of no use because it's in the form of integrals yeah so what do we do next ha this one because theorem divergence theorem okay because this is v this is s we need to have the same domain first so what does this do we can change this to a uh, triple integral over the volume by using gauss divergence theorem i'm sure you you learn that and you all you teach that all the time okay so that's it so now we have these two v and v and same integral okay here so we can we get this thing right uh why do okay this is also very you have to be careful is the derivative is actually uh in the beginning it was outside the integral and suddenly we bring it in so if we test the students why why is this you know they just simply uh, take it in but why what well, is because the finite control volume is fixed in space if it is fixed in space the derivative with respect to t is a constant right uh, is a, i mean uh, not changing and then so uh, we can put it in or bring it outside the answer is the same okay so we put it inside and definitely uh, when the right hand side equals zero okay and this is also very interesting i always ask my students okay uh, so when the right hand side is zero So what does it mean? What does this? The what the what do we get from the left hand side? If the integral of something is equal to zero, what does this mean? So meaning this integral must be zero. Okay. So usually uh, students, yeah, when I say like this, the x is equal to what? Right. <laughs> zero. Yes, it should be zero. Or zero. Uh, they they always say C. You know, it's not. How can you uh, when we teach them integration? Uh, you see, integration is the sum of small elements. Okay, then as the elements get smaller and smaller and smaller, you get the area or you get the uh, area or the volume or whatever the area. Yeah. So how can integral of zero you get a c? Eh? So this is some kind of you know second year first year students say integral of zero c. <laughs> yeah, so c is actually uh, actually what they are doing is what they think is this one d y d x equal zero. Yeah, so y is equal to zero plus c. Uh, okay, so this is uh, another thing. So when this is zero, so this integral is zero. So this is how we get the continuity equation. Very easy, right? Okay. Uh, see, like uh, just now we have. Oh. Okay. Just now I also say uh, this thing when it is. Uh, this is true for. Compress uh, all fluids, but if it is incompressible, this becomes uh, this becomes uh, simplified through del dot v or del dot u equals zero. How? Uh, this is where uh, mathematicians or mathematics students, uh, uh, I mean, need mathematical minds. Eh? So del dot rho u. What do you do with this? So del rho del t plus how do you calculate this? What's this? This is a differentiation. So this is something like what u. Uh, I was so good at this. Del ah u this one. How do you do this? Ah u v v d u d x. Plus u d v d x. So say the same thing as that. So we have u uh, del rho uh, del or oh, under I can't remember now. Uh, rho del dot u something like that. U dot del rho. Okay. Plus rho del dot u. Okay. From 
this thing. That thing. Differentiation using factor. But we can say that del rho del t plus u dot del rho plus rho del rho u if del u is equal to zero. This we have a notation which is called like this. Ah, this is called the material derivative. Ah, what is the material of derivative? Derivative following the motion. Okay. So you can have when you look at the fluids, you can be you are standing here and you watch the fluid pass through, or you start with the fluid and you move with the fluid. So there are uh, two uh, two ways to describe uh, fluid flow. Yes, it's either you just stop and you look, or maybe from the uh, upstream they have this uh, law. Okay. Kali balak whatever turun, so one pass you okay, then another one pass, another one pass. So we can describe also the velocity at this point like that, or together in a canoe or whatever you follow and you follow the speed or you get into the log you follow the log uh, downstream. Okay, so this is the second one. Yeah, derivative following the motion. Okay, the finite control volume does not, it can be fixed or it can be moving. Yeah? So if it is moving, this is d rho dt plus del rho u. But for incompressible fluid, nothing changes with time. So this is zero, so that's why we have this and we get del dot u equals zero. Okay, mm -hmm. so what is del dot u? Del dot u, the easiest one is for Cartesian coordinate. What is it? What is the continuity equation for Cartesian coordinate? Del dot u equals zero. So what shall we get? 3D. Del dot u apa? What does del dot u equals zero mean? Del dot u. Should be del u, del x, plus del u, del y, plus del w, del z equals zero. Okay? So that is what you saw. If I read, uh, show again my slide this morning, you can see, uh, well, you did not really see it like this. So I different, you change it to cylindrical coordinate. Okay? In cylindrical coordinate, it's something like... Yeah? Uh, the body force is 
consists of the gravity, the electromagnetic force, the magnetic force, eh? and the surface force is surface of the fluids, stress of the fluids. Eh? So some fluids flows uh, easier than uh, you know, like tar, uh, like uh, air. Air is different compared to uh, lava, okay, or glaciers, okay. So, so again, so what is F? So this is F. And what is the time rate of change of momentum? So uh, we can have uh, this thing. Sigma dot, uh, this is sigma, is the stress tensor, that's rho. And time rate of change of momentum, D, D, T, and V is equal to this thing. Okay? Uh, actually, this one, if I would like, if I express, so this one is wrong. I think there's dv here. Should be, should be, should be, should be dv, yeah? Or dx, I need to see that one. Okay? See? We have this. Right. Uh, what I want to discuss with you is this one. Uh, Rho v. D, D, T, uh, rho V, D, S, ini tak ada benda this one and this one is the same. It's just that uh, I said we change to tensor notation. It's easier. Yes, uh, this, these two equations, they are the same. I told you earlier, this is rho, it's a rho. The F, F vector is changed to F, I. That's all. Okay. And uh, sigma, okay. Sigma dot D, S. This is surface integral dot ds. We learn in vector calculus. It is dot n ds. Yeah, the normal vector. So that's why we have the uh, n j ds. N is the normal vector. Okay, so uh, this gives us all you know, we teach in uh, vector calculus second year. We teach at MTM. We teach it for second year students. Yeah? Uh, tapi, but we did not teach like this. We only give the formula and then give uh, examples. Yeah, so they can they can integrate. But when we give like this, they cannot do. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the v change to u i uh, <coughs> d s dot d s is u j and j. So uh, the v here uh, v this thing. So I think this is this. Wrong. Then that just not so because this is the so that should be the Okay. Uh, again, we did apply the Gauss theorem. Itu lah gunanya. That's the use of Gauss theorem that we learned. So as uh, the two double integral change to triple integral. Okay. So u i u j and j d s it becomes a del del x j rho u i u j d v means del dot. Okay. Okay. Let me see. And this uh, change to okay sigma i j m j d s. So it becomes uh, tadi uh, cos theorem is del dot v and yeah, del dot vector. So this is the del. And this is the sigma. Okay. So this thing are del i del del x plus j del del y plus k del del z. In vector notation, we just put del del x i. Because when i equals 1, uh, is del del x 1, which we can say del del x. I equals 2, del del x2, I equals 3, del del x3. Isn't this a short form? Okay. Uh, so we get this and again, this part, the right hand side is 0, so the integral must be 0. So this is the momentum equation. And this is what I showed you just now. Okay? Okay. Yeah? So, uh, this is 
remember this uh, equation. So this two, this two is this one. That B rho dt because we have del rho del t, okay, plus u del rho. Okay. okay. Uh, I won't go through the energy equation using the notes. Okay. For my blood flow, uh, actually, uh, temperature, most people don't consider temperature, but actually temperature is quite important because even uh, our, when we, our normal temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, right? When 38, we are sick already, right? <laughs> 38, 39, with small change, uh, we are already sick. So, <laughs> we should consider the energy equation actually. Okay? So, this is the... Uh, so, how do we solve? Okay. Any question first for this one? Uh, go to this book. And also any internet, if you Google derivation of uh, governing derivation of equation for fluid flow, but most books give this one, this description. It says the uh, 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 cubic, and then you add in forces and everything. I I uh, 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 I prefer not I prefer is uh, this one is for undergraduate usually. Yeah, because they, they cannot see all these uh, integrals. They, this one doesn't involve integrals. Okay. okay, for this method of solutions, we have finite difference. The MAC method, so MAC method is the marker and cell. But actually, uh, also for finite difference, there are many methods, but we find that the MAC method, MAC method is not a new method, it has been in existence. Why is it, uh, why do we take this one? Because it can calculate pressure. Okay, we want to know pressure, it can calculate pressure. The other methods, they assume the pressure. So it's not very good. Right? They assume pressure and then they solve. But here we don't assume pressure, we don't know the pressure and we calculate the pressure. Okay? So, uh, we will, uh, I will show for the uh, Newtonian model of blood flow in the microdated artery and a uh, second example on the uh, stage volume. <laughs> Okay, that's a, a, a description of why we use the uh, MAC method. So I'm very sure you can handle this particular uh, method uh, well because you are very good at numerical analysis. Okay, you will understand all these things. Uh, so I just introduced the MAC method and you can uh, find, you can Google it for uh, usually people, uh, papers of blood flow, uh, use MAC method to uh, solve. Yeah? Uh, and we use staggered read. It's, e it's an easy technique, well easy, relatively easy, to apply for solving non-linear equations. And uh, in a complicated geometry and require less computer memory for computation. This uh, will give uh, an example of how uh, finite difference is. I, uh, I think I prefer finite difference. You know why? For this uh, method, we have been able to solve the problem of uh, in tube and uh, up to the bifurcation. But for the finite element, uh, when I give to a new student, yeah, for master student, it takes a long time to solve a very simple channel problem. So to me, finite element, anybody using finite element here? 
No? All finite difference? Ada. Ada. So, it's, a, it's a difficult. Yeah, it's a, so, tapi itulah is a very good method. It's supposed to be a very good method and more robust for any type of problems. Yeah? You like just now when I talk about FSI problem, you use Mac, Mac, uh, finite element is better. Yeah? Uh, kalau yang senang ni memang finite difference lah. Okay? So this is uh, what the uh, Mac method is about. Uh, okay. So if you see this equation, if you look at papers of fluid mechanics, they will, most of them will start with this equation. Uh, this just start macam ni. So where do they come from? Tadi lah. Uh, from here. Okay, so now you know where do they come from. And what is this? The continuity equation, if you can see, what do you think this one? Flow in the tube, yeah? In cylindrical tube, tapi tak ada kita lah. Uh, kalau kita R, kita uh, Z. So the one with kita, we don't consider, I said to make the computation easier. We don't want to take into account that the blood is rotating. Tapi tengok tadi, blood tu tak lah rotating kan, saya jalan. So, uh, so the Z is the, for the axis, axis, and R is the radius of the cylinder, of the vessel. Uh, what is U? U is the velocity with respect to the radius, and W is the velocity, the axial velocity. Okay? Uh, macam mana dapat ni? How do we get this? From this. From this. How do we get this? For the Cartesian coordinates, is clear. You have du dx plus dv dy plus delta w del z. So now, macam mana nak dapat pula uh, Cartesian? Well, you can just uh, go to the back of any fluid mechanics book. Most fluid mechanics book. Write down this uh, continuity equation in Cartesian coordinate, continuity equation in cylindrical coordinate, continuity equation in spherical coordinate. Then momentum equation in Cartesian, in cylindrical and in spherical. You can just go to this book, okay? But if you don't understand anything, you just copy, right? And you don't understand the physics, the physical principle I was telling this now. You may get the equations wrong because some books use u for axial velocity and w for uh, radial velocity, and you get confused. How come here u and then and here they change? You know, if you think only think uh, one one track like that, you get confused with so many equations, eh? Yeah? So how? So we have to know from there dot u how to change to uh, polar coordinate or spherical coordinate. So we have to go. So there, uh, there, what in polar coordinate? So how do we go about it? We know that x is equal to r cos theta. Y is r sin theta. Z is z. Z, this is Y, 
this uh, this is x uh, x uh, x y z uh, okay. so this one is the i this is j this is k and now you change that to r okay so this is uh, r so this is uh, R cos theta, R sin theta, like that. Then you go up. So what is this? R cos theta, R sin theta, and uh, what's this? Uh, R cos theta, this side. Okay? This one. Okay? So R cos theta I plus R sin theta J plus Z K. So, uh, so you change this uh, gap into this form and you get this, okay? And for the reference for this one, there's a very good book, an old book called Patterson. Elementary with dynamics. Okay? So they will explain what is gap in uh, uh, cylindrical coordinate, what is dealt in uh, spherical coordinate, and we can get all these equations. Okay? Uh, it's not, it's, um, it's nice. So mathematicians, uh, I'm sure you like it, uh, uh, you all like it, you know, because the mathematicians uh, you like maths. Eh? So uh, it's interesting when we derive and we get the answer. We can check at the back of the book. <laughs> so the axial momentum, okay, and the radial momentum. So if it's uh, the in Cartesian coordinate, what when when do we use the Cartesian coordinate when we uh, consider a two D flow, two dimensional flow? Like for example, now people have uh, for for decoration, yeah, the I uh, you have a slab. Delay and then water flow sand. Uh, this is QD. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the decoration. That's the air flow. Okay. Uh, okay, right. So the boundary and initial conditions also, it depends. Yeah, so many situations. For example, like this one, uh, kita ada this uh, U0. Del W, del R equals 0, X, R equals 0. We always uh, put the conditions at the origin. And also, R equals R Z. What is, is this R Z? So that's the geometry of the vessel. So it can be just now the bifurcation, the Y bifurcation, the T bifurcation, and so on. And uh, also for Z, Z is the length of the tube, so we need to uh, to specify at Z equals zero and at Z equals L. So this one we need, uh, we have uh, some physical considerations for it. And okay, this is the R. Okay, remember? So this one R equals R Z and D R D T and we have R here. Okay, so what is R? R depends on the, we have many shapes. Uh, we can have overlapping stenosis, for example. How do we describe the stenosis? But just now, if you look at the uh, video, the stenosis looks quite simple. It's just like that. Nice. So this one, we usually put, we usually consider it as a cosine, cosine shape or sign shape which is it. So but some people you know they like uh, they want to make their life difficult they put overlapping yeah because uh, maybe like this okay and also uh, maybe like this uh, so this is we say irregular stenosis so for the irregular stenosis uh, we get from the doctor, from the angiogram. 
So the doctor that I was uh, telling about this morning, the cardiologist, said we can have, he can uh, as many angiograms as you like. Uh, yeah, so we, we can have all these features. So we need the boundary condition to, to, to check uh, where, uh, I mean, the, the blood flow in the artery. Okay. So that's it. This is in the tube. Okay. So the bifurcation geometry. So you can have this. So this is the this is the daughter artery. R1Z, and then we have the angle, we have this, let's say this is delta, and this and this, we say this is L0, and so on. Okay? And we have many shapes, so if, uh, so this is the uh, stenosis at the mother artery, and we can have stenosis at the daughter artery. Remember this now? All the parts that are shown. Okay. Right, so that's the first step. So we get the equations, we get the boundary conditions, and the geometry. That's the setting. Set that first. Okay. When that is ready, when those are ready, what's next? Uh, this is the map method. Okay, the discretization. Uh, so these are the steps. We non-dimensionalize. You no need to non-dimensionalize. It's also okay. Uh, what do you mean by non-dimensionalization? So we don't want to think about uh, L is meter, velocity is meter per second, uh, acceleration is meter per second squared. We don't want to do all these things. We don't want to think of this. We non-dimensionalize the equation so there is no all, all these uh, units. Okay, so like for example, just now you see that u equals 0 at z equals 0. u equals 1 at z equals l. Right? So we don't want this, we just want u equals 0 at z equals 0, u, u equals 1 at uh, u equals 1 at z, at z equals 1. How do we get z equals 1? We non-dimensionalize, we put z prime equals Z over L. Uh, so we can get when Z equals L, Z prime will be equal to 1. So it makes our calculations easier. Okay? But even if you don't non-dimensionalize, you can still solve the problem. Tapi banyak lah. L lah, M lah, apa nanti kan? That, that's all. That's the only reason why we non-dimensionalize. So when we non-dimensionalize the equation, equation that if you remember the continuity equation, okay, this one is in different form. You, if you remember the axial, the momentum, kalau that means it's not too far. Eh? Uh, ini, ha, tengok balik. Okay. And next you compare with the non-dimensionalized equation. So this one we have uh, rho u w w semua axial w kalau radial u and then we have r z rho and we have mu over rho mu ni is the viscosity of the fluid so if it's blood you can know lah what is the uh, blood uh, what is the blood viscosity or the velocity of air or velocity of water and so on. Okay, and rho is the density. Right. So compare with this. Ah, aku beza dia. We have this. Re. Re is the Reynolds number. Yeah. So what is the Reynolds number? Jadi bila kita non-dimensionalize, kita we can simplify the equations. There's no more mu over rho. Okay? Uh, so that mu over rho has been incorporated into the Reynolds number. So uh, when we run the simulation, 
we don't consider what is new, what is wrong, we don't care. We just look at the Reynolds number. Understand the difference? Ah, that is the uh, well beauty of non-dimensionalization. We don't have too many parameters. Okay, we don't have to deal with many parameters. Okay, so we can give you this to solve. Okay, for you numerical analysis, you can start here. Right, okay. I give you this equation. Uh, please do whatever you like from your experience. Please solve this equation with the boundary conditions just now. So that's that, that, that's it. Yeah, we are at here. Solve the So you don't really need to know all those derivations or whatever before this. Okay. So these are the equations that we. Uh, play around with uh, your system of equations. Okay. Uh, so we uh, first we do some uh, for the map method. We carry out some radial coordinate transformation. Kita tadi mungkin transformation. So kita radial coordinate transformation. Eh? Uh, we should have put ni uh, satu slide tadi sekali. What is x? What is y? What is what is that? Kita semua dah dah uh, uh, apa ni? Uh, transform from that equation just now to this equation. Okay. So one slide missing. Okay. Uh, so after the equations, right? So these are the equations. So this is the uh, the finite difference. So it's uh, here. Here, ambil the P, the pressure. It takes here, tengah tengah ni, in the middle, and the U I J, W I J like this. Okay. So that's the that's the base. That's the, this is the finite difference grid. This is the map grid. Okay. So that's that typical map. Okay. So you have to come to Johor Bahru. Huh? I have uh, I cannot explain you very well. With my students cannot explain. <laughs> Okay, so discretization of the continuity equation very easy. Del u del x is just uh, forward. Okay, del w del z is a backward thing, and this is always. Okay, so this is the discretization of the continuity equation. Okay, uh, so that. How it becomes continuity equation becomes like this, yeah. Oh, this is uh, uh, from from where is the continuity equation just now? The difficult one with U R and whatever uh, it turns out to be that. Okay, after discretization at the I J cell. Uh, the momentum e equation is a bit more involved, yeah, as usual. We have the PP, the PV, del P, del X, yeah. Del P, del X is the pressure gradient, so pressure gradient at T and at P. Huh? Okay. So this is the formula. Okay. So you can... Um, because uh, you have experience in a numerical method. So, so on this one can be maybe you want it to be more accurate, you change this step instead of forward uh, forward difference, you change to central difference or whatever uh, uh, discretization that is uh, better. Yeah? Okay, so that's it. So this is very simple central difference. I'm very sure you can think of other better uh, finite difference for this. Yeah. Okay, and we get this equation. This is the convective terms and this is the diffusive terms. Okay. 
finite different representation of the convective and diffusive terms. Okay. I can give a detailed one of this and what is this? Uh, this is this. The diffusion terms becomes like this. Okay. So we have this R, okay, that R, R is for the stenosis just now. So that's R to the back, R to the back, and R to the back. Okay, and the convex system. So here is also So it's just messy, that's all. Okay. Um, where W, L, okay. So all these, W, I, W, L, W, T, and so on. And where uh, you have all these things. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't put uh, 10 
or whatever. Actually, egg also not realistic. <coughs> you die already. You cannot put a strong magnetic field inside the body. So it's only like uh, 2.4, 2.3. So if you if the low magnetic field is okay, you can put the bangle with low, but don't put the strong magnetic field. Okay? Uh, you tak boleh. Uh, jadi, but uh, this thing, uh, that is if you uh, consider real physiological flow. But actually, this can be applied to any flow. Yeah? So the magnetic field can put 20 or whatever if it is uh, industrial free flow. Okay? But for body, you don't put. You just uh, put this for uh, to show. Uh, for so this is at the streamlines, okay? So the red one is the axial position, is the Reynolds number just now. So we look at Reynolds number 800, or we look at Reynolds number 10, uh, uh, small Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is, uh, the, it's called dimensionless parameter. This, this is the definition. Is the velocity, the length, and the uh, basic viscosity. So if you want, if the Reynolds number is high, if this is very low, viscosity is low, like air, yeah? So if viscosity is very high, like a tar or lava or glacier, the Reynolds number is low. Okay? If the Reynolds number is big, okay? Small, small. Small. Uh, small. If viscosity is big, Reynolds number is small. That is a small Reynolds number. Or the velocity uh, is high. Oh, boleh juga. Kalau velocity is high, Reynolds number is high. So this one doesn't matter. Yes, it's very. Ini supersonic flow. This one too. The velocity is very high. Okay. So this is one thousand two hundred. Now, bigger, it becomes turbulent. This is example in trachea. Yeah? Air flow in the trachea. So, it's air flow. Kalau blood flow dia, we cannot have until 1,200. It's small. Okay? Uh, okay. This one, see, look. Uh, for the finite element formulation, uh, the title is steady biomagnetic flow. So my student, the master student, only managed to solve steady. Yeah, not the reset or to for after uh, one one uh, two semesters, you can solve uh, slowly steady. Kalau yeah. uh, unsteady, the kata lebih uh, susah lagi lah. Yeah. This is the mixed finite element formulation. Have you all, are you familiar with the mix finite element? Ah, tak ada. Okay. So this is another uh, method that you can use. So same problem. Okay. Same equation. Okay. This is in a channel. Dia dah lah steady and is in a channel. Yeah. Not even a tube. Tube is more difficult to solve compared to channel. Okay. So you see del u, del x, del v, del y. What are all these bars for? Uh, the bars ni saja nak tunjuk because uh, remember uh, non-dimensionalization, we do non-dimensionalization. For example, we see u uh, is equal to uh, x vector. x prime is equal to x over l. This is non-dimensionalization. We have uh, uh, we have x and we have if the tube is of length L, we divide it by length. Or maybe we say R prime, R over A, the radius A. Okay? So it becomes non-dimensionalized. So sometimes people put this to be non-dimensional non variable. But we can always put the other way around like this. So meaning you start you start with all the bars and then when you non-dimensionalize, you have a nice uh, variable. Okay? So that doesn't matter. Okay? Uh, kita boleh juga, we can also do like this. 
by the just now, x prime is equal to x over m, and then we get all prime. Yeah? After non-dimensional set, and we say get rid of the primes, and now we have these non-dimensionalized equations. Okay? So uh, the biomagnetic problem, okay. So you know this one, this now, this is the U dot del. Okay, I want you to not to be scared when you look at the equation. I mean, not to say scared, when you look at the equation, you know, oh, I know these equations, you know. Uh, so, can anybody, uh, do you know what these equations represent? If you consider just now the derivation of the equations. The first one is very clear, right? The continuity. Continuity and 2D. Yeah, 2D coefficient. Del U del X plus del V del Y. The momentum equation. So this thing, remember, uh, is that term. Del U del T plus U
So this now is the uh, is F. Okay, it comes from the F. So this is the magnetic force term. Okay. So you see we will not end you and bar is the same both sides, but we have H bar also the same. So what is different? The gap. Uh, so it should just be U not bar N bar the H bar. Uh, the vector form. Correct? Uh, so when you uh, split into components, it becomes like this. So the energy equation we did not discuss, but we have uh, something like this. So this is the energy equation. Okay. So hopefully you understand now uh, at least the continuity and momentum. Okay. Yes, yeah, I think my main objective is that one. If you can understand the derivation of the equation, because. The discretization, I'm very sure I don't have to explain. You take no point, you will be able to So this is the geometry. Uh, this one you need to know a little bit of fluid mechanics. So you put the boundary conditions at the top. You put boundary conditions at the bottom. The length is L and so on. Okay? Uh, then we put a specially varying magnetic field. We put magnetic fields at this point. And uh, remember, okay, this is the geometry because after this, you can look at the result, what happened uh, at the flow around here, what happened at, at the flow uh, uh, further from the magnetic field. So this is the dimensionless governing equation. Again, when we have, when we change those things, we can have the Reynolds number. Patut ada lagi satu juga ni to show you how to get the Reynolds number. That's the Reynolds number is this thing. Rho u bar h bar over nu. So actually how? I mean maybe I just show you a bit. Here you have. Uh, mu, let's say you have mu and you have del. How do we get the Reynolds number? Okay. So look here, you see the Reynolds number comes into to this term. Okay. For example, we have mu del squared mu del x squared. Okay. But don't don't bother about the right? So this is del squared. What is mu? U is equal to uh, U prime is equal to U over H U. Okay? X prime is equal to X over M. Okay? So we just put inside that. So this is U, U equal U prime with U. And this thing, L is X squared is just uh, Okay, so ini 
Letak sini, it becomes what? U squared over L Nampak? U squared over L kan? U squared over L Dan okay. ni dia dah dapat lah U prime del U prime over del X prime Okay? This thing U di U di X So this thing Dah nak dengan ni Dia U bagi semua U divide through So we, what we have? L squared times L over U squared Ah, I think we get it L U Kan? Mu over L U which is 1 over R U Okay Boleh? <laughs> yeah <laughs> So that, that's how Okay Is Okay um, This is algebra
Acer 4G program. Okay, for the 73 hours. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, he has problem with this. Uh, he said for a uh, finite element, the problem is with the machine. Okay? You need to run it until the bottom of the converge. Then only you get the right solution. Yeah? So uh, to get the solutions to converge, get a uh, need uh, a long time. Okay? So this is why I think parallel computing uh, must come into play and help us. Yeah? So we have problem with this. Okay? To get the solution to converge before you go to the next step to put the lamp. Okay? The unstructured machine, uh, 15,728 non-uniform triangular elements. So they got to need all these are the triangular elements in this case. Okay? Uh, so this is uh, the answer. Okay? That's where the magnetic field is. That's the dalam satu ada sedikit yang dalam satu converse dan picture converse. And this ada, this ada tunjuklah how you do calculate the sinus and so on. That's what we get. The circulation. Ini tadi remember that's where the magnetic field. Oh, okay. Boleh. Yes. Yeah. 